Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1379. Hey, in this video, we got to talk about Power Query Combine Binary Expand button. And there's an update in the January 2017 version of Power Query. That button right there is the button we used to click to expand text files when we were importing them from a folder. Well, that button, when we click it now, does something different than it did in the past. Now, this video is specifically for Highline Excel 2016 class video 17, where in that video we learned how to build Excel dashboards, and we did all sorts of things. We used Power Query, Pivot Table, Charts, Conditional Formatting, the Data Model, DAX. But the video portion about how that button works is not accurate anymore. Now, why in the world would Microsoft change this and update all of our versions of Power Query? Well, that old button used to remove all the columns except for the content column. So this was the only column you could keep. Now, in our video down here, that was fine. But in other situations, sometimes you want to keep the name of the file. And so the old method wouldn't work. Also, this button only worked on text files in older versions, which was fine for our video 17. But now it works on all sorts of files, including Excel files. And finally, in this video, we had to manually remove the extra field names. And in the new process, we won't have to do that. Now I want to actually go look at the part of the video, this class video 17, where it showed how this button worked prior to this update. So I'm going to go to YouTube. All right, we're at the Highline Excel 2016 class video 17, 610 minute mark. I'm going to click Play. Now content, there's this little double downward pointing arrow. We click on this to expand our text files. And check that out. There's all of our columns. Now, part all right, so I clicked pause on the video. We clicked on that button, and it did all of the steps for us, including over here. You could see it says combine binaries. That means combine the different files. Imported CSV, that means text file. Look at that, promote headers and change type. Well, wait a second. It looks like the previous version promoted headers, but what it did was only promote the headers for the first file. If we have multiple files in that folder, it does not do it for every single file. So there were mistakenly listed down lower in this data set field names. And in this video, the next step, I show you how to remove those, but we're not going to need to do that anymore. Let's go back over and see how this new combined binary works. All right, so here's that step in the video we just saw. There is our combined binaries button. When I click it, there's just going to be a few extra clicks we have to do, but a lot will be going on behind the scenes. So we're going to click this. And our extra step is this text box. Now, there's actually three questions. The only one we really need to worry about is the delimiter. Now, file origin, we don't need to worry about that one. Data type detection, that means how many records in the data set we're importing will Power Query look at. Now, you can tell it to look at the entire data set. But for us, our data is consistent. So I'm going to say based on first 200 rows. And this is the step that matters. We can clearly see here that our different fields, transaction number, date, sales rep, region, website, product, units, all of them are in a single column. That's because the delimiter is listed as a comma here. The delimiter, of course, as we remember from early in the class, means what is the character that separates each field. Because we have .txt files, our delimiter is tab. So this is really the only step we're going to have to be sure and do different than the video. When I click tab, there it is, each one of the columns listed separately. Now I'm going to click OK. And that's pretty much all you need to do, because there it is. Then you finish watching the video. But I actually want to step through these steps and these steps over here and look at what happened behind the scene. Now, all of these steps are just, hey, Power Query needs to look at a sample of data, and that's the file it looked at. Here is the code it did for us. It promoted headers and changed the data type. You can see each one of these has the correct data type. Now, we actually can't see the code. We can just see the end result. If you wanted to go look at the code, you could go to View, 
advanced editor. And in Power Query, this is the behind the scenes M code. Each one of these steps you can see is the applied steps that we see over here on the user interface. Each line has a function. There's our promote headers. There's our change data types. Now guess what? That code can be used on every single file as it's imported, especially when, of course, we refresh. Now I'm going to close this because that's technically not the step that gets used on each file. Notice Power Query created a function for us. That's the icon we know from Excel, f of x, which means function. Now, we can't see it here, but if you go to Advanced Editor, and again, that's not required for this class. We're not editing it, so I'm going to click OK. All it did to create a function from that code is added this top step here. Now it can use this code on every single file that it imports. Even if we had 20 files, it would run this and promote the headers properly and transform the data type. I'm going to click Cancel, because the coolest thing of all this is there's our transaction table. Those are all the steps that that one click of the Expand Binary button created. But over here, it says Invoke Custom Function. And watch this. I can click on that one file, because remember, we had two files. If I click in the green off to the right of table, Promoted Headers, Data Type, click down below. It did it for every single file. So we don't have to manually get rid of the field names. And if I click there, expand the columns, there's that last step. And that is the difference in the January 2017 update for that combined binaries button. All right, now you can go back and watch that Highline Excel class video 17. We'll see you next video.